Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, you know, a while ago we made mention um, of the last Gigi that's on the planet, you know, um, and we haven't gotten through to explaining that in detail. So this time I think it would be good to do an explanation of that. You know, uh, what did we mean when we said the last Gigi on the planet? And, you know, again, what we've discovered is you can really piece through a lot of the uh, old biblical tales, especially the non-biblical Sumerian tales. Um, but when you when you delve deep and start doing a comparative look at all the different myths and legends and, and mythologies from everywhere, all over the globe, it, it really does shed some light. But still, without that, I, I would still personally be somewhat in the dark if it wasn't for the channeling ability of my absolutely wonderful wife that I adore and love so much. And, you know, she is, a for me, she's a gift uh, from above because she has brought clarity for me and she's inspired me to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, we did get the message uh, that there was three Ijiji on Earth up till recent times and two are no longer. Now, these are permanent people, beings, um, that are here on the planet and that kind of maintain the control grid on the planet. Again, the Gigi originally came here from Mars, and I have said before multiple times that the Abrahamic tradition is a Martian tradition. That's where it comes from. Uh, the people that are in direct control of Earth, the ones that have really kind of run the show so much to, as far as managing the more minutia, um, have been the GG through their offspring, who are these uh, families that you may hear of and, and other families that you may not hear of. Uh, but when you look to the royalty on the planet, quote unquote, the royalty Again, you know, all the clues are given there. Uh, kingship was given from on, on above. Kingship was given from the heavens. Not from heaven as in like 5D, 6D, but from the skies. It came here from elsewhere. When the quote-unquote gods were no longer here, and again, that's such a broad term, because humanity at different times has referenced different beings as gods, some of them benevolent, some of them extremely male malevolent. Some of them that have wiped out and genocided the planet, you know, to a, a high degree. And again, they've all been put in this classification. If you look at um, the Vedic tradition I've shared with you, we have the Devas and the Asuras. Now, the Asuras are those that are basically, well, you could view them as demonic, but really they're in service to themselves. They're all about themselves. They're all about, um, they're not about spiritual endeavors. They are about whatever sort of things you might want to call magic uh, as far as pursuing magic that will help them in their endeavors. Because they understand, again, magic really is a thing because this whole reality, as we know from a quantum physics perspective, is just waiting for us to tell it what to do. And so they're always seeding our thoughts. When, when you look to concepts of original sin, for instance, talk about gaslighting. That's all about infusing in humanity a negative mindset from the get-go. Why would they do that? Because it makes us more susceptible to listening to them. And so I wanted to go into this. There is so much that we can glean but then I think there's more that leads us astray in the traditions of the Abrahamic tradition. Unless you, you've gone and, and done a comparative study and then you could start to see where things uh, are incongruous. But most of all, going within. you got to go within. When you look to the book of Enoch too, which I wasn't going to bring up, but let me bring it up. Yes, let's do this thing where we get into the flow of it, which is always fun because it's spontaneous information. And that's what makes up so many of these videos. So when there's inspiration to be had, you cannot pass it up. And a lot of people are real curious about the Book of Enoch. 
what is it you know is it is it good is it bad can i read it can i not so many questions when you're coming when you're talking about religion and how to's you know and again this is not the be all end all this is still completely uh, shrouded in controller jargon because they get us to think using certain words certain ways of phrasing things that lead us away from the truth so you know here you have a group of fallen angels that come down to Mount Hermon. There were 200 of them, and they came down on artists, which some of the Mount Hermon. And, you know, they made an oath, and so it gives their names, Semyaza and Ramiel, Kokabiel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel. It goes on and on and on, Azazel. Uh, you know, 200 angels. Now, again, the original Greek word is is translating as messenger. Um, now the Book of Enoch may be one of the oldest ones uh, that was in circulation, and if we are going to give it the benefit of the doubt, we may say that maybe it goes back as far as about 200 uh, BC to 200 AD. Um, I think this is one where they were kind of holding it back to a certain point to again release it to the public when the public had started to learn about giants and started to you know basically look into other mythos and recognize there's legends of giants all around the world you know when europeans came here to the americas they encountered giants you know and then we started finding bodies all over the united states when we were uh doing our digging you know we're going to dig a garden <laughs> oh look at the size of this guy he's like nine feet tall Hey, Ma, check this out. Holy crap, look at this size. You know, again, you, you know, so when people start to realize things, they got to start to take control of the narrative again. So that, that one little blurb from Genesis 6, you know, uh, talks about, you know, we could bring that up too just to, to cover all this. See, this is why I um, was hesitating because in reality, uh, to go into this, Oh, that's Genesis 6, 3, 1, uh, 6, 3. Let's go back to 6, 1. Um, we can sp probably spend 12 hours on this. And as long as I had water, I could keep going on this because there's so much to this. But I'm going to try to keep it again in palatable, small, easy to consume pieces. Uh, and I know there's some of you guys out there that can take that, that can take big doses. Give it to me. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. So now when man began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, the sons of God, or the sons of the gods, or the sons of the mighty ones, saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took as wives whomever they chose. Well, I'm sure they didn't look and see a really cute looking orangutan or a nice, you know, sexy chimpanzee, although you never know with the leadership of this planet. Uh, yeah, no, the, the, there were beings on the planet already that were not as they depict them. When we talk about Denisovans, when we talk about Neanderthals, they purposely make these beings look more, um, more beast-like, more animal-like, less humanoid on purpose. It, that is totally, totally, totally done on purpose. And so the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, took them as wives, whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His day shall be 120 years. Now what we have there is uh, basically mRNA technology at work. You know, this is genetic engineering. This is also starting to do things like uh, put those funny clouds up in the sky. Yes, they were in the sky then. The things that we get these Wikipedias saying, oh, those are contrails. Well, you know, they had sightings of those funny clouds going all the way back to the plague of Justinian. 1,500 years ago, they had the, the funny clouds in the sky then. They made note of it too. And we could pull it out of the Bible. We had one... You know, one soul that I know was brought up totally thinking the Bible is an inerrant and perfect. Oh, <laughs> oh you know, you need to actually read your Bible. And, and oh, well, you need the, the Holy Spirit in you to understand it. Well, that's like saying you need a little, a little bit more mRNA therapy. You know, again, this is the reality of what we have going on. 
So when you go to the Book of Enoch, you then discover a lot more detail. Because, you know, over here on 7-1, they took wives for themselves. Everybody chose for himself. One each. Only one now. Well, that first one. And then they began to, well, you know, they say go into them, be promiscuous with them. And they taught them charms and spells. And they showed them the cutting of roots and trees. And they became pregnant and bore large giants. And their height was 3,000 cubits. You know, when you look at these, what is 3,000 cubits? It's it's massive, and it's an impossibility when you're talking about a, a physical human woman that might be five feet tall, or f maybe she's big, maybe she's six feet tall. 3,000 cubits? Let me hand this off to Cindy for some commentary. Yes, yes, I'm always happy to do commentary. So, I mean, how is that even feasible? But if you look at how they write, the bible it's like they're writing it for three and four year olds so they just write it out and and basically assume that you're going to believe them oh yes these women had these giant babies and it didn't split them in two and and they're fine no it's it's genetics it's 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 crispr technology you know they're taking you know information and they're putting it together and creating another being in an incubator so i know it's when with with the technology that we have now, it's not so far-fetched to understand that. But a while back, people didn't know about um, these technologies. So anyway, we're talking thousands of feet. How does, how does, yeah, this, it's literally translating to 4,429 feet. How does that come out of uh, a woman's, you know, it's an impossibility. And and again, yet there were massive giants. Now, as we shared with you, the Earth itself is the leftover remains of Tiamat. Tiamat was a much bigger planet. Tiamat was in uh, in orbit between Mars and Jupiter. This is the original placement of the Earth, and Tiamat was, according to the Babylonian Sumerian tradition, uh, a dragon so to speak it, it's represented as a dragon could be represented as a dragon serpent for that kundalini energy which you know is in humans and flowing in the other ages and is flowing in some people right now obviously because we are awakening and there was a battle with marduk now marduk is regarded as an anunnaki god and some would classify him as an egg you know again Marduk is the son of Enki. Enki was originally Ea, uh, and Enki, you know, means Lord of the Earth, so to speak. And we had his brother Enlil, you know, who was actually younger than, than him, but better bloodlines per se, and elevated to a higher position. Enlil is the one, by the way, that said mankind's too noisy, we got to get rid of them, just wipe them all out. And again, when you recognize the fact that they come in ships and, you know, again, because these beings, these beings are not, they're not capable of going as high as we are. You got to recognize that too. Yes, they have more technology than we do. Yes, you know, they are the ones that are feeding our governments right now, all this technology and information. But we can go places they can't. You know, we can develop full full body Merkabas and and end up on 5D in beautiful benevolent realms that they will not see the light of because their vibration and frequency is too low. So again, you know, they are trying to seduce us with something that is, uh, well, they're trying to sw sell us swampland. They're trying to sell us desert. They're trying to sell us something that is really bereft of any true value in the bigger scheme of things. But they are con men and they are scammers and they are liars. And again, they are always convincing the masses just through understanding human emotions and human tendencies. So again, do you really think that a five to six foot tall woman can bear giving birth to a giant that's 4,429 feet tall, you can't take this literally. It's not literally. Because as, as Cindy was saying, again, this is all about DNA. This is when you're thinking in terms of um, artificial wombs and CRISPR technology, MN, mRNA technology, now you're starting to get the bigger picture there now. And so what they're talking about here is is how 
these different beings taught men how to make swords and daggers, etc. Taught us uh, a lot of different things. Now, what they've done here, because they do also uh, show us, according to this, how to farm, how, how to cultivate and all this sort of stuff. And then we get into uh, the sins of, of immortals and, and mortals um, cohabitating and creating beings that are your demigods and stuff. And again, this is all a distortion. There's actually many, many different types of beings that we're talking about here. It's all put together um, in a way that, again, is meant to get you chasing your tail. This is all about, you know, <laughs> hooking up a play toy to a dog's tail and the dog's, the dog's just going to go in circles for hours and keep himself occupied and never really get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and making sure the whole time they are giving you your belief system they are giving you an understanding because that really does keep you chasing your tail because you don't go externally you don't go outside of any of this holy book that you've been given because you were told not to you know oh, just really only pay attention to this one thing right here and again you know it just makes me kind of sad when I read it and I see how they were talking to people with without any um i don't know without any feeling that they're doing wrong by completely misleading people a hundred percent just by their naivety i mean it's 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 horrible it is it is absolutely and so yeah you know again the distortion is that there is a creator of this universe um, but that creator is, is not a vengeful vindictive god so you have the beings that we would call the Anunnaki and the Ajiji uh, playing both parts, playing the creator of this universe and, and playing themselves in that they are <laughs> nasty, uh, vindictive, and vengeful, and they view humanity as slaves. So when they say, say stuff like the most high, the great and holy one spoke, etc., you know, uh, again, it, it's a distortion because it's not the creator of this. And in, and when you think about uh, the archangels, yet yeah, you might think that the archangels Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, Raphael, uh, you know, even Metatron, Sandalf, and uh, belong to the Abrahamic tradition. They don't. But and these are real beings. Those are real beings. But these are beings that are immense. Uh, these are immense beings uh, that literally help in in forming universes and and you know they're they're just so far beyond the way they're portrayed uh, again in those Abrahamic texts so when we're talking about the Gigi so we have the Anunnaki again let's reiterate that humanity has been in its wakened state in its physical body living in a 3d reality we're, we're trans uh, we're we're transforming right now into beings that are going to be full-time 4d beings and for those that are cultivating the inner spiritual work you know deep meditation yoga qigong things like that you will be touching on 5d at times when you start to experience that that blissful state of oneness that exists uh, with having all your chakras open, a free flow of the kundalini energy, and connecting to your higher self. But we won't be dipping back down into 3D per se. So everything is changing. We are changing. The old laws of science are, are not really going to apply. Uh, and again, science has been basically given to us to control us and to put us into a limited a limited frame of mind so that we don't see the bigger picture you know they gaslight us with the whole concept of original sin they get us to endorse blood sacrifice every time somebody says oh i believe jesus died as a blood sacrifice for my sins you're condoning blood sacrifice and this in turn enables them to sacrifice humans and blood sacrifices every day through warfare and other means and we don't realize that that's what we're doing every time you say something like the nicene creed which i was brought up with you're actually condoning the system and people don't understand this this is how dark and evil it is they are basically tricked 
into condoning the system that enslaves them. And, you know, here it's the same thing with the political system. Every time we vote, you're saying, I, I give authority to the political system. That's what we do with voting. Why, why, don't the, why do you think they would want to see high voter turnout? Why do you want, think they want to see high participation in the economic si system? Because you're taking part in their system. You're condoning their system by being a part of it. And yeah, almost all of us have. You know, that's the thing. But as we wake up, then we have to slowly start to make our way away from that. One thing I've realized, too, like if we look into the Vedic tradition, it's fascinating. Because when we look to Indra, and now Indra is the god of storms and is the highest of a certain type of Devic um, being in this reality when you look into the Rig Veda and the four books of the Vedas. Now, the realization is that Indra is really more of a position than a person. It's uh, kind of like an office because it will also say that this being is the Indra for this age. Oh, wait a minute, the Indra for this age. Yeah, that means there would be other Indras. And when we you know, think again, uh, this universe, according to uh, Vaishnavism, was created by Vishnu. And, uh, you know, other sects might say of Hinduism might say, well, Shiva is actually, you know, the top and then others, Brahma. Um, it's interesting. Abraham, Brahma, Brahman and Sarasvati, Sarai, Sarah, Abram and Sarah, Abraham and Sarai, Brahma, Sarasvati. This is, again, how, you know, the Bible is, is completely a rehash of everything that came before it. It is the, um, it's, it's the narrative for this age that they've come up with. But they've utilized the same sort of narrative time and time again. When you look to the Gigi, the one thing you might look at is and say that they were the subservient gods to the Anunnaki. But then again, the Anunnaki, and I won't tell you this, are subservient to the Draco. And the Draco are subservient ultimately to this AI intelligence, this artificial intelligence um, that we know as uh, kind of typified by a black dragon, so to speak. This is the ultimate control system. And this is the... Um, the thing that wants to transplant the creator of this universe is this black dragon AI consciousness construct. Yeah, the construct. That's what I see when I looked at the top of the pyramid, like what really is in control. And it has everything to do with this AI entity who is wanting to be just like source. It wants to do everything that it wants everything that source has the only problem is it has nothing original it must copy that's its only capability is copy 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 so as you can see when we look in life we have things that we can do like um you know telepathy we can talk with each other with our minds and you know they have put given us these devices these phones where we can talk with each other on messenger so for every natural organic thing that we can do, there is a modified copy of that. And what that does is it keeps us from using our organic abilities and it keeps us kind of in this uh, state where we're not bothering to use these newfound muscles or these newfound abilities that we all truly have that is lurking inside of each one of us depending on your your lineage your galactic lineage that's going to decide what abilities are more powerful for you you know which chakras do what you know which uh, planetary system are you tied to that has everything to do with who you are and they just spend a tremendous amount of energy to uh, hide all of this natural systems that we have going on. 
So when we talk about those 200 that came um, to Mount Hermon, per se, again, you know, much of it is allegory and it's a twisting and a distortion of, of that which is the reality. But you can't take that as a representation of the beings that we would call the Gigi, um, which are, again, we were talking about humanity being 3D, flesh and blood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when we die, we're basically 4D. We're on the astral side. We don't lose our consciousness. We, we still are us, per se. And in the normal way of things, we would have... Um, a life review we'd analyze what we did in this life what we didn't achieve what we wanted to achieve etc etc and then according to uh, certain parameters I including you know karmically we would come back and try to learn what we wanted to achieve in this life that maybe we didn't do and you know in some cases we might not even come back to this earth we might you know go and and explore different realities if we were of a high enough frequency we could go uh, and explore a 5d reality somewhere what we have gotten is that about a third of the people incarnated on earth you know maybe about 30 percent or so um, have had lives on other planets in other systems and about two-thirds, 70% um, haven't. All they've really known is Earth. So again, this, this could give you a little um, understanding of why some are maybe a little bit more naive than others, uh, more easy to believe what they're told by the power structure. You know, again, some of us just know when things are wrong. It just rings w off with you. And it's because you've had all these past lives. You You know, you've looked into the sky and you've seen totally totally different uh sets of stars up there maybe multiple suns like we were talking about in our own future multiple moons things like that you know maybe you even recognized uh or or had perceptions of beings that don't look human at all in your past so let's talk about the EGG. if if you've been studying ancient astronauts there's likely a number of terms that you have become familiar with and this is from anunnaki.org uh, backslash the gg so again this is um their interpretations why do we pull this stuff up so you guys have something to go and read and look at and again resonate for yourself what is is right do we agree with all the things that are out there no i, I don't think anybody has it right in print and and again it it, it would be <laughs> It's almost impossible to get it right because everything has been so twisted, it purposely twisted. You know, they're very good at this and they've had a lot of time to go through this. And they have AI that can run different scenarios and come up with the least likely scenario that people will figure things out. And that's what they do all the time. So, you know, Anunnaki, Nephilim, reptilians, but one word you may not be familiar with is Ijiji or sometimes Ijigu term doesn't crop up a whole lot in the Sumerian Babylonian lore, but where it does, it has fascinating implications. So simply put, the GG seem to have been a lower rank of gods. Now, you, you could probably translate that more accurately, a lower rank of extraterrestrial interdimensional beings. There were, they were a servant class which existed before human beings were created. Occasionally, the term is used synonymously with Anunnaki, but this seems to be an inappropriate. Consider the following passage taken from the myth of the Atrahasis, which is the Akkadian creation myth and flood story. When the gods, manlike, bore the labor, carried the load, the gods' load was great, the toll grievous, the trouble excessive, the great Anunnaku, the seven, we're making the Ijigu undertake the toil. The passage definitely denotes the Ijigi as separate from the Anunnaki and certainly a lower caste of beings. Okay, so let me share this with you. And so last night we were watching um, some Vedic. I was reading a book uh, that's been giving me just a, a tremendous wealth of information and making me realize wow, okay, I have other books I have to get. I, you know, I have a lot of uh, the Hindu scriptures, but there were still, I mean, well, there's so many to cover, there was, so I had to order some more. So we have a bunch more books coming in. Um, going into 
details on exactly how the structure works. Like when we're talking about devas and asuras, there's this eternal battle between the devas and the asuras. And I've always associated the asuras with the Anunnaki and the, the Ajiji. Now, when we get down to it, the asuras can include many different types of beings from different star systems, different planetary systems of totally different types. It's the same thing, really, when we're talking about the Anunnaki and the Ijiji. You might think of this more in terms as upper class, lower class. You might think of this in terms of, if you want to take a military way to look at it, enlisted men are your Ijiji, you know, whereas all your officers are the Anunnaki, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, but the problem is, is, is once a being starts to wake up, there's no stopping that. So, <laughs> you know, what, what seems to be the pattern here is that these beings are created and they sort of understand each other and then one is always going to try to clamor up and above the other. And we are we have a lot of these systems in us too. We are very powerful as well. And I this is why they are watching us, watching our abilities, combing through, sending out frequencies, seeing who who is what frequency. That's very important information because they don't want any of us to overtake, overcome, become better than because we all have that potential. When we look to <clears throat> the stories, the modern retelling of the great ancient myths, and we look to you know, things like Star Wars, for instance, as you know, we, we can find a lot of allegory in Star Wars that does correlate to what's going on right now, the light and the dark side, the Jedi and the Sith. You know, so you might look at the Jedi as being defenders of uh, order and law of a high vibrational nature, not, not the law of systems we have on the planet Earth. No, not all that corruption and biasness. No, no, no. But it, in terms of the original plan for the universe, the original plan by the original true creator. And then you have the, the Sith side, which is all about me, me, me. You know, if you remember Star Wars and Anakin as, as a young man is starting to say, my empire, mine, 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 mine. And he loses it when his mom dies. And then it's rage. And think about this again. What are they trying to do? Why are they letting us know? So clearly, you know, what is going on on the planet because they want us enraged. Because again, you know, there's a lot of truth to there. Anger leads to hate, hate leads to the dark side, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to keep your vibrational frequency at a very lower uh, place. You're going to come back and do it all over again. They know this. They know this. You give in to hate, you give in to anger. It's okay. They might not get you this time around but they'll get you the next go because you're going to find yourself in the same place again so to speak and even if it's on a different planet you might still find yourself underneath their control because again this is an intergalactic battle so in the last trilogy you had the last jedi right you had the last jedi and so when we were talking about the last egg you could really think of it as a being <laughs> that really is reminiscent of uh, Emperor Palpatine. Isn't it interesting, too, how he starts out as this apparently benevolent senator trying to fight for the rights of humanity, right for justice, fight for justice and freedom throughout his empire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then, you know, the dark side comes out. Interesting, too, because, again, the beings that we get that are closest to these beings are are really, you know, beings like S-O-R-O-S and the P-O-P-E. Um, and yeah, even uh, when we look to 45, he has a GG blood in him. They all do. They all do. You know, again, the reason why they are in the positions they are is because of their bloodlines. This is, again, why you have blue bloods, right? And royalty intermarrying. Why is royalty always intermarrying? I mean, you know, you get people with epilepsy. You get all sorts of different, um, you know, leukemias. It it causes all sorts of problems. Why do they constantly 
remarry into the same families. It's, it's again, because there's certain bloodlines that can bear a certain frequency and vibration, so they can be overshadowed by the dark side, and they also have certain abilities. The abilities of, an, uh, of one of these Ejigis, so if you get that reference of 200 of them when, when the Dark Age starts here on Earth in this current time frame, again, it's an arbitrary number, um, but there were many, many more than there is now. And they did have amazing abilities of mind control. And so they do. And there is just one left right now. And they're trying to bridge the gap till that point when we are at, we and the earth are at the frequency to where the uh, Anunnaki can return in mass. And again, we've gotten that that's 15 to 20 years away. However, we did get from the star children that in 2035, the Anunnaki start to, the Anunnaki slash EGG. Um, and again, it, it will be the GG because it's more of a rank thing. It's more of a rank thing. Understand uh, that it's more of a caste system, per se. Uh, they'll be the ones that are in the smart cities. And again, maybe five to ten in each city, you know, such as we know there will be a smart city there in New York and there will be in all the major metro um, areas. We, we saw three of them in Texas, even though Texas was uh, loaded with a lot of people that seemed to be freer moving about. There still was three big smart cities in Texas, which um, I'm assuming would correspond to Houston, uh, San Antonio and Dallas. And so you'll have beings like this again on the planet. But again, uh, these are giants. Now, the ones that we have now because of the interbreeding and all, because again, there's many of their offspring here on the planet. They might not be so, so big, but hey, Baron Trump, man, he's, he's six foot seven and still growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something interesting there, you know, and when we when we talk about abilities and we talk about our natural nature this is an entity that when his final energy is released there's going to be a huge huge boost in consciousness because it's by his very being by just him being alive just barely is holding down consciousness it's holding down people from awakening so as you can see, it's very important, these timelines, when a certain being comes into the world and a, and a being goes out of the world, because it matters. It shifts everything. So when you're working on people or when Mike and I are working on somebody, a little strange thing happens and it's called entrainment with our vibrations. <clears throat> and that means that the vibration that's being worked on is going to become uh, rise up with the other vibrations that are closest with it or that vibration that it is working directly with so it helps that vibration rise up and in essence it does bring about a good amount of healing so with this entity him and, and specify the gg because the gg Okay, yeah, we're spe we're talking about the Ajiji. With this Ajiji alive, he is able to hold over a certain amount of energy that suppresses human consciousness. So this is something that we're waiting for. What is what exactly is going to happen when he dies? Um, I think I think we're going to see a lot of changes on the planet. I think we're going to see a lot of major things that we've been waiting for start to happen. And I don't really want to say the vocabulary words on the video because you know we could get in trouble but yeah massive earth changes when this when this ajiji passes and so what we wanted to share is who this is because we we um it is possible to know who it is and it came to cindy through the guides um because this is actually somebody of historical note which is pretty fascinating. Again, there's so much allegory to what we see. Like you see Luke uh, Skywalker apparently ascend. He's there and then he's not, right? And yet he still is. And it's the same thing with us. When we're in the spirit body, um, and again, when we, when we pass on, 
We can, even if we don't have a full Merkaba, you can still have uh, interaction with people that are gifted. <coughs> and, and at some point in time, you're going to have the majority of people that don't do the stuff that the controllers want you to do. You know what we're talking about. If you don't do it, you're going to have those abilities because we are being triggered right now from the sun, from the energy from source and from the energy from the creator of this universe. So we're never really gone. And yet the ascension to, to 5D and beyond is, is the ultimate goal for many besides those that that decide to come on down and to be more like a bodhisattva, be more uh, like what we would call an ascended master, so to speak. You know, so again, you got all your little wikis and they want to clarify it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, again, it's all so twisted. But the good news is this last one is ready to go. But you know what? He was actually supposedly granted immortality from the Anunnaki. Is it really immortality? N no. See, the thing is, we have immortality. And you you might think of it as, you know, in a, in a way, sure, the body is going to go. But we are immortal. We already are. And what they want to do is take that away from us. They want to utilize our source energy. So in reality, they want to plug us in to the, you know, black AI dragon uh, draconian control grid to where we would actually potentially even lose, you know, our, our source energy or control of our source energy. No longer be able to uh, reincarnate in the natural way of things and to transverse these different densities, but be stuck in this muck and mire of the lower 4D. So when you hear of the story of Noah's Ark, right? And again, the Noah Ark story is a much, much more uh, modern retelling of the Sumerian and Akkadian stories. And you hear of Gilg Gilgamesh. You remember Gilgamesh? This is a lion. This is how big the guy is. You know, the guy was a quote-unquote demigod. You know, one of those half um, half gods, demi half, right? And you know, it's an interesting story, the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Atrahasis, where you're introduced to beings as this is Gilgamesh uh, crying over Enkidu, and you know, you look at this kind of a hybrid being with horns, a wild man, right? It, it it's interesting, but. And it might seem crazy and fantastic, but, you know, the reality is, you know, it's it's out there in, in many other, tr all over the globe. You, you find all these traditions of these giants and different beings, you know, just look to the Greek mythology, you know, look at centaurs, minotaurs, look at um, all these different hybrids. And, I mean, just look to the Egyptian gods, you know, and now in some cases, those are masks because they didn't want to show themselves totally. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I picked up. You know, a lot of these beings did not want their faces to be seen. So they did. They they wore a mask and definitely extraterrestrial in nature, but also understanding enough that they know what their influence can do. They know what showing themselves to the masses can do so there's some that came here and they were good leaders and some that came here they were not such good leaders so you know it's it's a matter of we're never really going to know the truth but we are going to learn how to read the energies and find the truth for ourselves we're all going to have these abilities and that's the exciting thing about it when we have the time and we have the drive then you, you sit in a quiet space. And sure, yeah, it does take some time and determination, but it can happen. It, it can happen for every single one of us. And, and let me just like expound on that a little bit. When Cindy said, you're never gonna know the truth, I would like to add by reading what's in Wikipedia or what reading what's in your Bible or reading what's in your um, Talmud or reading what's in your Quran or, or you have to go within to really get all the answers. But the 
beauty is that not too far off, not too far off. You know, uh, I, I, I share it. I have a, a little granddaughter now, one year old, and, and Cindy has granddaughters too um, that are beautiful little angels. Now, you know, the reality is the kids that they would give birth to, hopefully everything will be able to happen like that. I mean, these kids are going to be gifted with a reality we, we we would never be able to conceive of, you know, being born in the 1960s or 70s or 80s or 90s or even 2000, even now. It's going to be a totally different world. And really, it it's not going to be hidden from them anymore as everything is being revealed to us. So when you look to the Atrahasis, this is an 18th century BCE Akkadian epic, which is a rehash of the older Sumerian epic. Now, the Akkadian uh, kingdom came a, a little bit later after the Sumerian kingdom, and that was to the north of what we would call uh, the Sumerian kingdom when we look to Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldees, according to the story, and, and that is in Sumeria. 18th century BCE, 18th century BCE, and it's a recounting of probably what was at least, you could add another 500 years minimum onto that. So we're talking 4,000, 4,500, 5,000 year old stories, right? And this is your original Noah's flood story. When you, when you go and you look, well, what's the oldest copies of the Torah that we have in the world? And so the Torah can mean many different things. In general, it refers to the first five books of the Jewish Bible, which is known as the Pentateuch. And when we look at what do we got? Okay, well, we have over here, number nine. This is the University of Bologna Torah Scroll. They say it was written between 1155 and 1225 CE. CE. This is 3,000 years after the, the Akkadian, 3,000 years after the, the Akkadian. And again, the Sumerian originals are probably 500 to 1,000 years older than that. 3,000 years, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's not even close. When, when you're looking at what you have in the Bible, and if the only thing you're looking at is the Bible, if the only thing you're looking at is the Koran, you're only looking at the controller narrative. The Leningrad Codex, 1,000 CE, CE, Damascus Pentateuch, 1000 CE. Now, these are full copies for the most part. You know, over here you have the Aleppo Codex. This is from 930 CE. Um, hundreds of pages missing today. And when you start going down farther, then you get fragments, you know, 7th, 8th century CE um, fragments. This is, if, if you look at this picture, you know, again, can you get a whole story from that little, can you get a story? Uh, no, no. And, and again, that's when we start getting into the different fragments and pieces. And the oldest really is the Dead Sea Scrolls um, and these Ketef Hinnom Silver Scroll Amulets are, would be the absolute oldest. And again, there's only a few little quotes from the Book of Numbers in there, and it's tiny little bits and pieces. So again, not even close. Everything that we get from the Atrahasis in much, much greater detail, you know, again, it tells the story of the Sumerian Akkadian Noah. Utnapishtim. Utnapishtim is the name of, of that being. And the flood story is, is really uh, the same. It's the same basic story, right? Utnapishtim is tasked by the god Enki to abandon his worldly possessions, create a giant ship to be called the preserver of life. And so Marduk is said to have been the originator of the flood and the seven sages. The preserver of life was made of solid timber, so the rays of Shamash, the sun, would not shine in it, and of equal dimensions in length and width, right? Same, same sort of thing. The design of the ship was supposedly drawn on the ground by Enki, and the frame of the ark, which was made in five days, was 200 feet in length, width, and height, with a floor space of one acre. 
The arc interior had seven floors, each floor divided into nine sections. Finished the arc fully on the seventh day. Oh, wow, the seventh day thing again. The entrance to the ship was sealed once everybody had boarded the ship. So he was tasked with bringing in his wife, family, and relatives, along with the craftsmen of his village, baby animals and grains. The oncoming, oncoming flood would wipe out all animals and people not on the ship. After 12 days on the water, he opened the hatch of his ship to look around, saw the slopes of Mount Nisir. And so this is also um, mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh. It literally means the Mount of Salvation. And again, you know, what we're talking about is is towards Turkey, towards um, uh, the Anatolia area. So where he sent out a swallow and just as before it returned, having found nothing, finally sends out a raven. The raven saw the waters had receded, so it circled around but did not return. Upanishad then set all the animals free, making a sacrifice to the gods. There's that blood sacrifice too. Uh, the gods came. And because he had preserved the seed of men while remaining loyal and trusting of his gods, Upanishtim and his wife were given immortality as well as a place amongst the heavenly gods. Enkiya also claims that he did not tell Atrahasis, apparently referring to Utnapishtim, about the flood, but rather only that he made a dream appear to him. So, interesting. So, the Sumerian Noah, the, 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 the Noah that the Noah story of the Bible is based on, again, this is thousands of years older, is, is actually granted immortality. And this is the last EGG. Mm -hmm. The last EGG. You know, this information is really, really fascinating when you are able to reach in and pull things together and find that understanding and finally unfold the truth and so then it goes into the story of um, the epic of Gilgamesh where Gilgamesh is overcome with the friend uh, his friend Enkidu dies and he sets out on a series of journeys to search for his ancestor Utnapishtim uh, who lives at the mouth of the rivers and been given eternal life and so it's a quest for immortality. And again, Gilgamesh is, is the being that must have been, gosh, I don't know, 16 feet high, 20 feet tall to hold a lion with one hand. I mean, you know, seriously, if that is not a uh, exaggeration, how do you see if you look at remote view Gilgamesh, um, how do you see him? Well, yeah, he is a large energy. Um, he He's also definitely not very nice, very forceful, very forceful entity that rules through fear. You know, we have we have leaders that rule through understanding and uh, wisdom. And then we have some who rule with an iron fist and complete fear. And he was one of those. And it's almost like he set the standard for uh, moving forward when it comes to doing things out of cruelty to force in compliance. So he was like the poster boy of that. So other beings who were of that nature, who ruled by fear, they took that uh, blueprint from him. So when he does go and, and talk to, when, when Gilgamesh talks to Utnapishtim, Utnapishtim explains that Anu and Enlil decided to kill all humans. The hearts of the great gods moved them to inflict the flood. Their father, Anu, uttered the oath of secrecy, but Ea Enki warns Utnapishtim, tear down the house and build a boat. Again, abandon the wealth, seek living beings, etc., etc. And, and it gives you the whole flood story. So here you know that the ones that set out to destroy humanity are... The Anunnaki, those beings we call the Anunnaki. And, you know, this is this is the origin of, of your Noah uh, story. And it's interesting, too, you know, when you uh, see um, Lamech. You know, Lamech, I believe, is the one that was described as being uh, very, very white and glowing. Yeah, you know, again, there's, there's a lot of different DNA on us. And we were... Um, 
a show popped up in the feed and it was talking about uh, the secret alien hybridization program. And Cindy's like, oh, God, we're all hybrids. You know, yeah. understand we're all hybrids. So many different beings have interacted on this planet. So again, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, he goes on that quest for immortality after he finds out how horrible the living conditions are in Kor. He is told the only mortal who's granted immortality was Utnapishtim, and he sets out to find him. And he does find him. And Utnapishtim was, again, a human granted immortality, basically uh, gets assigned the position of an Ajiji. Because again, when we look closer, these are more like titles. These are more like mm, positions. Again, it's like taking a enlisted man or actually taking a slave. And then, you know, you can relate to that slave if you want to talk about uh, the story of Ben-Hur or something along those lines. A slave becomes a free man. The free man then becomes, uh, let's just say, an officer, so to speak. And so this is all um, fascinating, but this this is also how it's also twisted. And you know, then he goes to um, this place where the immortals live. And and you know, when you look to the mythology um, that Tolkien uh, brought to us and gave to us in the Lord of the Rings uh, so beautifully. And how about the elves going off into the West, right? Because their time has diminished amongst the man, uh, amongst humans. And it's time for, for humans to be on their own. And, and no longer will they interact with this other race of beings. We could get into the Tuatha Dé Danann, which we have. And p please do, you know, do some Google searches because we've, we've talked about all this before. And you see that you know, of the Anunnaki even, some of them did view us in a little bit more positive light than the other, but you got to recognize these are not 5D beings. None of them are vibrating at 5D. They've all taken, uh, they've all drank the Java juice per se. They've, the, these beings again, too, you could look at them as they are conquered beings. They, these are beings that, that gave up in the big war and bowed the knee to the Draco and the Draconian Empire, and now they serve the Dark Ones. If you want to go and look at it, these are beings that, again, are very much like Darth Vader kneeling before the Emperor and saying, what is thy bidding, my master? Mm -hmm. You know, if I can just kind of hammer home the part about we are all mixed races, we do, however, come to Earth with specific um, soul races in the sense like what did we come here to learn and there's three different races in Vedic astrology that that talks about that you know the lessons of life but we are all we're so we're just mutts I mean there's so many different there's no such thing as this one person is part alien we're all part of that alien all of us but which where did we come from? What is our galactic history? And if that's something that you think is going to help you and that is going to serve you, then I would invite you to walk down that path because it is quite fascinating to understand where you are from. But just know we are all in this mixed up soup together. Absolutely. And, you know, this is also uh, a quote that comes from the encounter with uh, Gilgamesh and Ut Utnapishtim. And it says, go bake for him his daily bread. Think about that. Give us this day our daily yeah. bread. That comes from this. Yeah. That comes from this. That's, that's not something that was ever given to you for the first time from the Bible. No, you know, and again, so what, what have they done? They've gotten you to say, not our will, but your will be done. Whose will? They're all, you're talking to the Anunnaki. You're talking to the ones that control the controllers. So they got you coming and going. This is this is how, you know, and again, you got to recognize they use AI to, to basically gameplay every possibility. They are far uh, more sly than most people would understand. There's nothing new under the sun here. This is all part of the control system. 
because this universe was created so that each individual soul can find its own way in its own way. And that's the whole purpose. We are all unique beings. We're, we're not all to conform. And, and what does Islam mean? To submit. To submit to what? The will of God. The will of the Anunnaki. Because the real will of source is that you find your own way, your own path. If that involves, you know, every second step is going to be a hop and you scratch your nose, that, that's what it is. And that's good. Be unique. Be unique. Yes, be unique. Be yourself because everybody else is taken. That's what I always say. And they tell us. It's all right there. Why did Enki do die? Oh, because of an illness sent by the gods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in actuality, I mean, we could get into that. And, and that's why... You know, I, I can't shut up when it comes to people believing that, well, everybody's got their own own belief set, and that's fine. It is fine, you know, but at the same time, if you really want to, in your heart of hearts, be serving light and love and, and you know, working towards a good outcome for all beings, where all beings can find their own way, and yet you're constantly throwing power to the dark ones that are doing this to us and are asking for help from the dark ones without knowing that it's the dark ones. Then light needs to be cast on that. So just little things, you know, like again, you know, if, if you want to make sure you're addressing the creator of this universe, say the creator of this universe. Just that simple. You know, and, you know, archangels, you know, again, those are benevolent beings. Or you could just say, you know, I, I pray for the upliftment of all humans and all all conscious beings upon this planet. You know, and I ask this in the name of the creator of this universe, whatever that name may be. You could leave that blank. But if you just say the creator of this universe, you're specifying the creator of this universe. Because when you look to... Uh, you know, the Bible, for instance, you look to the old texts, you'll see sometimes we are given El Elohim, which is a plural. Sometimes we are, are, are given, you know, the, what we would interpret as Yahweh. Um, and again, that's where Jehovah comes from. And, you know, there's big, big differences, big differences vibrationally. And, and people will recognize those differences in the future. And many do right now as we talked about the Gnostics in the past and how the Gnostics came up with the realization that, you know, that Old Testament God, that we, that, that's the Demiurge. That, that's, that's, that's a dark, dark entity. You don't want anything to do with that thing. But we've gotten to that Demiurge itself is kind of more like a, a true computer program. It's not, not that dark AI construct, but in some ways it is kind of a, a manifesting program placed into this matrix by the original creator, not necessarily dark um, and not the Anunnaki, you know, again, so this is where everything gets distorted. And of course, you know, they control everything. They're rewriting history every single day. So of course, you know, to, to believe that the most published book of all time and the third most published book of all time are going to be pure and totally true and right is just insanity. And it, it just is a matter of opening eyes and opening hearts. Right. You know, do do your work, go within, find your answers and go on your own path. Because if you're pulling in your own information, that's not something that can be that's not something that can be uh, misused, we'll say. Yeah, and again, you have to get your frequency high. Um, because again, it depends on where we are. So if we are on the big FARMA, uh, then yeah, we're going to be clouded and we're not going to be very, very high. Uh, we have to clear ourselves of all these toxins and lower vibrational frequencies that we're constantly being plugged in with. This is why people do things like fasting. And by the way, if you're listening, Jane, we are proud of you. You knocked it out of the park, girl. You did an amazing job. Jane had never uh, fasted for 24 hours. And, and when we were speaking to her, she was up to like 84 hours and, and going to break it. Um, but she didn't feel bad at all. She actually felt really good at 84 hours. Um, 
you know, more power to you. That was amazing. And we wouldn't recommend that people start out shooting for 84 hours, especially if, if you're still eating, you know, fast food or, or eating less than optimally or you're diabetic or anything like that. But there is a reason why people fast before going on a deep spiritual pr- pilgrimage. And it's to clear ourselves of these frequencies. And that fast could be too, unplugging the computer, unplugging your routers, sticking your f- smartphones in iron skillets and putting the top on that skillet and sealing it up. Um, again, getting away from the technology because they control us through the technology. Well, the indi- indigenous people know exactly how to reach that higher source. They know how to reach the, the spirits. They know how to reach father sky mother earth and it's all surrounded in fasting and i think that's probably one of the most basic ways to find your higher self and to hear from your guides is fasting but carefully i really have to emphasize that very 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 carefully yeah absolutely so before we go and i do know this was a long one um but hey you know it 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 didn't take 12 hours uh and hopefully you guys got something from this cindy's going to give us some dings may you all be blessed by the true creator of this universe uh and again if you need to call on your angels you could just word that word it that way because we all have angels that are out there looking out for us and protecting us and and i know my life has been saved by them more than once Keep those happy thoughts. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.